that on property. What, where, how. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. That and property is one of those questions I get asked all the time. And the main thing is, I'm paying VAT, can I claim it back? I think I need to register for that. Now, unfortunately with property, it depends what strategy you are doing to determine whether that can be claimed back, whether you can register, and whether you can do anything about this additional cost that we all have to pay in general life, but in your business life, it's whether or not you can minimize any impact of VAT. Today we're going to have a look at some of the different strategies and which ones we can ignore that, which ones we need to do something with that, and which ones where we have a choice of whether we do something early or we wait till we have to be registered. Let us start today with the probably simplest and most common element of property strategy, which is our simple buy to let. And I shouldn't say simple because to be honest, they're one of the best strategies out there to generate some good income and some capital growth. But does VAT apply on them? And can I claim it back on the expenses I incur? And sadly, the answer is a big no. With buy to let properties, and residential rental income, unfortunately this is classified as exempt income for VAT purposes, which means even if you go over the VAT threshold, which is at 85,000 when I've made this video, you're still not going to be able to register for VAT even if your rental income goes over 85,000 because it is exempt income. This means you will just have to stand the cost of the VAT and you don't need to record it separately. You don't need to do anything with that VAT you pay apart from pay it and record it as an expense and you get tax relief on the full expense, including the VAT. Now this leads me straight into the HMO market or multi-let or house of multiple occupation and this is identical. And the reason this is identical is because again, it is residential letting and residential letting is exempt for VAT purposes. So with a couple of HMOs, you're probably going to be getting over that 85,000 income threshold. However, because it is exempt, you're still not going to be able to register for VAT and the VAT that you do incur is going to be just an expense of the business. Now, this is probably a little bit of a negative point for a lot of people, especially if you're doing residential conversions to create a HMO, as you'll see on the channel that I have been doing but do check out the video on the 5% VAT rate to find out how you can reduce the VAT that you are paying with your refurbs. It doesn't mean you don't have to pay it, it just reduces it potentially down from 20% to 5%. But check out the separate video on that as that will just help hopefully reduce the cost of your refurbs. Moving on to a slightly different model and let's have a quick look at the rent to rent model. An interesting way of doing things because you don't actually own the property, but you are still getting residential letting income. So on this basis, the VAT rules will follow suit that if it's residential letting income that you are receiving, it will be exempt for VAT. So whether it's rent to rent or just you own the property and are letting it out, it is still not going to be relevant to you, the VAT elements. It's just going to be a cost to your business. Now, this does change when we move into the serviced accommodation market. And this is whether you own the property and are doing serviced accommodation in your own property or rent to serviced accommodation. And in both of these scenarios, we do need to consider VAT. The reason we need to consider VAT is because this is now talking about a trading income. So if we think about a hotel, they'll be VAT registered because they're providing short term accommodation. And as a service accommodation provider or holiday let provider, you are providing short term accommodation. And in this guide, you may have to register for VAT. Now, this is where you potentially have the choice with that, because if you're under the VAT threshold of 85,000, you do not need to register yet. And you can wait until you have got to that VAT registration limit before you register. 
then check out the separate videos on when to register and how it all fits together to find out more information on that. But let's just briefly mention that depending on the clientele that you're working with, so if you're working with VAT registered companies, you may actually want to register your service to accommodation business earlier because then you will charge VAT, but your customer won't necessarily mine. And then you'll be able to claim that back on all of the different costs that you're incurring, such as your accountancy, telephone, broadband, bills with energy costs, and all those sorts of things. So it will make your costs cheaper and hopefully not have any issues with your clientele. If you are letting your short-term lets to the general public, then the likelihood is you want to delay that registration as long as possible until you have to do it because they're not going to want to be paying VAT and it will probably have an impact on your profit margin. Moving on to sourcing as a strategy. Now, if you're sourcing property, then you arguably are providing a service and a service would fall within the remit of VAT. So as a sourcer and a sourcing business, you would fall within the VAT regulations. And if you go over the 85,000, you will need to VAT register. Depending who you're working with, you may wish to VAT register early, but if you're dealing with general individuals, maybe it's not going to quite be the right thing as it will reduce your profits and have an impact on the individuals who potentially may want to work with you. Moving on to flip properties, as this is all to do with residential property generally, this is all going to be exempt from VAT. So for this type of company, you're not going to be having VAT registration issues. Unfortunately, you're just going to be taking the hit on all of the costs. Obviously, when you sell the property, any costs that you do incur will reduce any taxes that you end up paying. So I don't know whether it's a win-win or a win-lose or a lose-lose, but um, that is where we are on the flip side of things. You'll buy the property, do the work, pay the VAT on all the costs that you have to pay VAT on. And then when you sell the property, any of those costs that you've incurred will reduce the amount of tax that you have to pay as they're all allowable expenses. Moving on to something close to flips, but where you're building it from scratch onto new builds. Now, this is where that comes into play again, because on a new build, when you build something new, the VAT rate is 0%. So if I sell a new build property for 200,000, it's 200,000 plus VAT, but that VAT percentage is zero. So I'm going to be selling this for 200,000, including VAT. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's actually quite an important point there because now I need to be VAT registered and I can claim back VAT on any of the expenses that have VAT on them. So this could be wholesalers, this could be professional fees, for your contractors, for your builders, and also for things like your phone or for your accountant or for any of the services that you have as a business because you're fully VAT registered. But you won't actually have to pay any VAT to the VAT man. You'll be claiming it back for all the expenses that you are incurring. So for a new build project, in essence, you want to get VAT registered as soon as possible because you'll be able to start claiming back all of the costs that you've incurred VAT on on a quarterly basis to help with the cash flow side of building that project. So for a new build, get sorted on VAT straight away and go and have a look at the videos on this side of things. The final piece of the puzzle that I wanted to cover today is commercial property. There is the option that some people do commercial conversions to residential, and that's a whole different topic. But commercial properties, they may have VAT on them. Now, one thing you'll know if you are doing commercial property is a comment called an option to tax, which the seller of any property or one that you're looking at buying, you just need to check whether there is an option to tax on the property. There will be a separate video on this on the channel, because it is very much a specific area of tax and VAT rules. But if there is an option to tax on the property, then that means that you will need to be VAT registered and you will be able to claim any VAT expenses back, but you will have to pay VAT on any rent that you have in, as the rent that you get in from that commercial property will be rent plus VAT. So commercial is slightly different and there will be some videos following on the channel to do with the commercial side of things. 
but this is an area you do have to get your head around the VAT side of things and the option to tax aspect. So today is just about mentioning it so you have an awareness that you need to be considering it for this strategy. This hopefully covers most of the different strategies that I'm seeing out there at the moment and it gives you an idea of which ones you may need to do a little more digging and which ones you can be happy that you don't need to worry that there's any VAT implications. Hopefully today you've discovered what you need to be doing with VAT depending what strategy you have employed in your property business. If you have any questions then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel and let's make tax less taxing. Let's tax.